Welcome everyone to the next installment of the structure of immunoglobulin series. Here in this video we will discuss different types rather different classes of immunoglobulins. Now as mentioned earlier in my previous videos that the constant region present in the antibodies are relatively constant. What does that mean? That means that it doesn't mean or when I say that this is the constant region that doesn't mean that it is completely constant. It doesn't mean that the amino acid sequences present in this particular section never changes or there is no variation in this particular section of the constant region. It doesn't mean that. Rather, it means that the amino acids which are present or which constitute the constant region of a typical antibody shows variation but as compared to the variable region it shows lesser variation therefore this particular region is relatively constant not completely constant and based on the little variation that is that is shown by the constant region we can classify the immunoglobulins into five different classes starting from immunoglobulin g immunoglobulin m immunoglobulin a immunoglobulin d and immunoglobulin e here in this video we will focus on immunoglobulin G and immunoglobulin M and in the next we will cover up the remaining three. So looking at immunoglobulin G at the first place this is the typical structure of immunoglobulin G. This diagram which I have given here it is just for illustrative purposes. More appropriate diagram will be pinned up at the end of this video. So talking about the structure, it is a monomeric glycoprotein. Now see, this structure which is given here, it is the structure of a typical immunoglobulin G. But this is the most fundamental and the simplest structure of any antibody. So since it is the most fundamental structure of any antibody, it is known as the monomeric form of the antibody. And immunoglobulin G exhibits this form of structure so it is a monomeric glycoprotein of the total immunoglobulin that is present in the blood 70 to 80 percent are immunoglobulin g look at its immensity about 70 to 80 percent of immunoglobulins present in the blood are what are immunoglobulin g so though you can see that it holds a fundamental structure but it is the most common immunoglobulin present in the blood and not only that it can be both intravascular that is within the blood circulation and it may be extravascular that is outside the blood vessels now based on four to six amino acid variations present on the ch3 domain the immunoglobulin g may have four subclasses now see now don't confuse yourself based on the variation shown in the constant region we have classified the immunoglobulins into five different classes which i have already mentioned but based on the variations of four to six amino acids on the ch3 domain now see this is the entire constant region now from here to this section it is the ch1 domain from this particular part to this particular part it is the ch2 domain and from this portion to this portion it is the ch3 domain now your doubts regarding the diagram would be cleared after uh, analyzing the image that i will pin up at the end of the video don't worry about that so in the ch3 domain there is a variation of four to six amino acids in the same immunoglobulin G and based on these variations of four to six amino acids the immunoglobulin G may be again classified into four different subclasses starting from immunoglobulin G1, immunoglobulin G2, G3 and G4. Have you got this point? The point is that yes based on the variations in the amino acid composition present in the constant region of the antibody we have got five different classes of antibodies right but based on the variations of four to six amino acids in the ch3 domain 
specifically in the CHT domain, the immunoglobulin G can have four subclasses starting from immunoglobulin G1, G2, G3 and G4. Now if you look at the concentration wise order of these four different subclasses in the blood, then you will see that immunoglobulin G1 is the most abundant followed by immunoglobulin G2, then comes immunoglobulin G3 and thereafter immunoglobulin G4 follows. Now talking about the molecular weight, immunoglobulin G3 has got highest molecular weight followed by G1, G2 and G4. Now if you want to know that why immunoglobulin G has got the highest molecular weight, then just as an extra information I would like to say that it has got 62 amino acid in its hinge region, in its hinge region. Now this region, this region that connects this particular portion of the immunoglobin to this particular portion of the immunoglobin has got the hinge region and within the hinge region there are 62 amino acids in immunoglobin G3 but as compared to this G1 has got 10 amino acid G2 also has got 10 amino acid and G4 also has got approximately 10 amino acid on its hinge region therefore the molecular weight of G3 is highest then comes now about the immunoglobin specification we have already understood now we need to understand that when does this immunoglobulin G specifically comes into action now immunoglobulin G gets activated and comes into action when there is any sort of chronic infection now what is chronic infection any infection that can persist more than 10 days that is the symptoms or the infection if it persists for a longer duration of time then such kind of infection is known as chronic infection and in such cases the antibodies that would play a predominant role is immunoglobulin G. Now see now we have understood that immunoglobulins be it G, A, M, D, E whatever it is they play a very important role in recognition of the pathogens but just mere recognition will not do our job after recognizing the neutralization of the antigen must also be executed because without neutralizing the antigen or pathogen then that particular pathogen might cause some sort of abnormalities within our body so it's very much important that neutralization of the antibody occurs so after recognition neutralization process takes place now neutralization process takes place in a number of ways but two definite ways are either by phagocytosis or by complement system now what is phagocytosis now see phagocytosis means engulfing of the pathogen which has been binded with the antibody altogether and after engulfing it digesting the same takes place now how does it take place now see there are certain specialized cells in our immune system which are known as the phagocytic cells these phagocytic cells perform phagocytosis where these cells they engulf the antigen binded with the antibody and after the pathogen is engulfed there are certain enzymes certain digestive enzymes within such phagocytic cells these digestive enzymes are released and with the help of these digestive enzymes the entire pathogen is neutralized then comes and yes if you want to know about the phagocytic cells then one of the phagocytic cell major phagocytic cell is the neutrophil then comes baso, basophil eosinophil we will learn about each and every cell in detailed manner in the upcoming videos don't worry about it but just for now you need to know that phagocytis phagocytosis is one of the way of neutralizing the incoming pathogen which has already uh, binded to the antibody then comes another another process to which neutralization takes place it is the complement system wherein now see complement system is what see there are certain proteins which are released by the liver liver now these proteins are usually present in an inactive form in the blood but when stimulated by the presence of certain antibodies binded with the antigen or the antigen itself then they can also perform the neutralization activity okay about recognition and neutralization it's over then you need to understand that it is the only immunoglobulin that will cross the placenta during pregnancy the only immunoglobulin that can 
pass the placenta that can cross the placenta is immunoglobulin G. It is very very important from the exam point of view. All right. Yes, one more thing. Uh, it's left. That is except now. See, we have got four subclasses of uh, immunoglobulin G, G1, G2, G3, G4. Now, out of these, G1, G3, and G4 can pass the placenta, but this cannot. All right. Okay. Then comes immunoglobulin M. Now, talking about the immunoglobulin M, you can see at the image. It is. It has got five fundamental units of immunoglobulin a typical in immunoglobulin right five fundamental units of a typical immunoglobulin binded together by disulfide bonds the appropriate image would be pinned up by the end of this video now this is the structure of Im immunoglobulin m where five fundamental immunoglobulin units are connected together via disulfide bond and here you can see there is an additional structure which is known as the J chain. This J chain provides stability of this entire molecule. So it is known as IgM is the pentameric glycoprotein. And of the total immunoglobulins present in the blood, about 5 to 10 percent are immunoglobulin M. Now this immunoglobulin one, now see a typical immunoglobulin has got two antigen binding sites, one here and the other here or in other words it has got two paratopes one here and other here now since it is a pentamonic it has got 10 paratopes it means it has got 10 antigen binding sites now additional J chain is also present which I have already said and they are connected to this you know uh, antibody units via disulfide bonds now in humans it is the first immunoglobin to be synthesized now say for example there is a new, newly born baby now within him, in order to protect him from the incoming pathogens, immunoglobulin is very much required and the first immunoglobulin to be synthesized in his or her body is immunoglobulin M. Now come to the next, plays a predominant role during acute infection. That means an infection that persists for less than 10 days, that is any infection that persists for a shorter duration of time or in fact during the very first infection the immunoglobin that will play a major role is immunoglobin m now see one of the other uh, distinctive criteria of this immunoglobin m is in its specification that is it is present only in the blood that is only intravascular unlike the immunoglobin g then comes effective role in complement activation yes now see one thing you need to remember now in order to activate the complement proteins followed by the neutralization activity the complement proteins also requires certain receptors right the complement protein also requires certain binding sites so that it can bind with the antibodies and can perform the neutralization activity right now a typical antibody can now see here it is the ch2 domain and it is the ch2 domain or within the ch2 domain there are certain binding sites for the complement proteins now a typical antibody a typical antibody which is the simplest antibody can provide basically you know uh, fewer binding sites as compared to the pentameric antibody so therefore it is said that igm has got an effective role in the complement activation as it has got more binding sites than uh, immunoglobulin G or other immunoglobulins now see one more thing you need to understand that immunoglobulin M is the oldest evolutionary oldest immunoglobulin present so now since we have discussed about the structure and the roles of immunoglobulin G and immunoglobulin M now please carefully look at the images that I am providing here now after this particular session gets over and then you can clearly compare the structural similarities and dissimilarities and also the roles which each of them play okay with this let me wrap up this particular session and last but not the least if you have liked this content then please do share and subscribe with this let us wrap up thank you so much.